Hey everyone, Josh Powers here, and today we're going to go over the painting feature inside Mixer so that you can learn how to best utilize this powerful tool to help you create amazing textures even faster than before. So let's jump to it. There are two ways we can utilize painting inside Mixer. We can add a paint layer and paint PBR information directly onto our mesh or surface, or we can paint a mask layer to reveal or hide the PBR layer information of a Megascan surface or solid color layer. Let's start with a paint layer. When a paint layer is selected, the properties panel on the right will give us a layer specific settings like any other layer in Mixer. However, we'll also see a new panel pop up on the left side of the window, and this gives us all the different paintbrush settings. So let's take a moment to go over how these options work. If you've never worked with the paintbrush before, the list of settings might feel a little bit overwhelming. However, each setting is clearly labeled and easy to understand, making it a very simple tool to use. At the very top of the panel are two icons. On the left is the paintbrush, and on the right is the eraser. You can also press B on the keyboard to switch to paintbrush, or E to switch to eraser. Next we have the brush presets. The brush presets house the standard mixer brushes, as well as additional brushes downloaded from the Megascans library. Grabbing new brushes from the library is very easy to do. Simply go to the online tab here, then select the brush option from this drop down menu, and then click on the brush you want and press download. Once the download's complete, just go back to the viewport and your brush is already loaded in the brush preset window, ready for use. You can also load your own custom mask, which I'll go over in a few minutes. Below the brush presets is brush settings. The first option is size. As it sounds, size lets us adjust the size or radius of the brush. You can also change this dynamically by holding S and middle mouse button, then moving the mouse left or right. Because the size of the brush is a fixed size in the viewport, you can also quickly adjust the size by zooming in or out. Next we have angle, which allows us to adjust the rotation or angle of the brush. You can also adjust this dynamically by holding down A, middle mouse button, and moving the mouse left or right. Spacing will set the distance between successive brush marks made within a single stroke. So when you have a low number like 10, it feels like one continuous stroke. However, if we bump the value up a bit, as we click and drag down the mesh, we'll have more of a dotted look. This is very useful when you want to have evenly spaced strokes such as placing bolts and screws across a panel. And then finally we have opacity and flow. Opacity controls the strength at which the paint is applied whereas flow will control at what rate the paint is applied. If we drop the opacity down and then paint, it doesn't matter how many times I go over this area, it'll not apply anymore unless I release the mouse button and paint on it again. Flow, on the other hand, will continually build up the paint as I repeatedly go over the same area, even if I don't let go of the mouse button. This is a great way to gradually build up the painting without having to repeatedly click on the mouse. A couple of the default brushes will allow us to change their properties, which is what we can do in the brush shape panel. The softness setting lets us change the radius of the maximum intensity. So in other words, how much of a fall off the brush has. A setting of zero gives us a nice gradual fall off, whereas maxing out the slider will give us a very hard edge. The center curve lets us control the curve along the brush. And then the base curve lets us control the curve along the base of the brush. The brush jitter settings are an amazing way to quickly achieve more natural looking strokes. So if we go back and select one of these nice looking grunge brushes and draw a line, we'll instantly see that the brush just repeats itself over and over along the entirety of the stroke. This kind of repeating look will quickly make a texture feel fake, which is definitely not what we want. So to fix this, we can slide the angle jitter up and now as we make another paint stroke, each successive brush mark will be applied at a different rotation, giving us something a bit more irregular and natural looking than before. Jitter also works with size and flow as well, giving us a lot of control over how a single brush stroke can look. Then finally, we can adjust the different color values of the layers. So if we bump up the albedo a bit and set the metalness to white and then lower the roughness, we can now paint down a metallic surface onto this mesh. And because this layer is a freeform painting layer, we can make adjustments to these values at any time and continue painting. 
and you can toggle each of the layers, which means you can paint on all of them or just one or some combination in between. It's your choice. You can also click on these three dots here and then go to the reflectance presets to load one of many metallic values to quickly get started. Or if you come up with your own values, you can always save them by selecting Save Presets and then giving it a name. But painting is not limited to just albedo, roughness, and metalness. When we enable the displacement layer, we can paint displacement information directly onto our texture as well. By adjusting the slider, we can control the intensity of the displacement. And we can dictate whether the displacement is raised or lowered by choosing from these two icons here. So if we select this first one, which we can also do by pressing Z on the keyboard, our painting will be raised. And if we press the second button, or X for the hotkey, the displacement will be lowered. And if you want to set the displacement to a fixed amount, we can click on this icon, or press C, which will allow us to dictate a specific displacement amount. And don't worry, even though we're painting on a displacement map, Mixer will convert that data to normal information. So if your project doesn't utilize displacement, you'll still have the normal map to work with. If we want to load a custom brush to paint with, all we need to do is come down to the brush shape section and highlight the selected brush preview image. We'll notice the preview image shifts to a folder icon, so all we need to do is click on that icon, and then select our custom brush image. Now the brush is ready for us to paint with. And if we want to save that brush for future use, we can click this icon here and give it a name. And there you go, it'll be in your brush preset library from now on. You can also remove it from your library by selecting the brush and then clicking this trash can icon right here. And if you want to go back to the default brush, you can highlight the selected brush preview image and click the X. Now let's take a look at the right panel. This panel allows us to make some changes to our paint layers. At the very top, we have a dropdown that lets us set our resolution. However, whether you decrease or increase the resolution, changing the setting will not affect the resolution of the details you've already painted, so keep that in mind. We can also adjust the opacity of the paint layer with this slider here. And we can also clear all the maps, which will delete all the paint strokes we've made. We can also control the visibility of each of the four painted layers by clicking on the icon to the left of each layer. And to toggle off all the layers except the one you're clicking on, hold down Alt while clicking the icon. If we click the little arrow on the layers, we'll see some additional settings specific to each layer. For example, we can change the blend setting for the albedo layer to overlay, which gives us some drastically different looking results from what we had before. In addition to the overall opacity up top, we can also control the opacity for each layer so that we have complete control over the visibility of our layers. We can also clear maps specific to each layer, invert the results, and even use this layer to load custom images as a base for us to work with. As I mentioned, these settings are available on all four layers. However, displacement actually comes with one extra setting that lets us increase or decrease the strength of the displacement value, which is incredibly helpful for minor tweaks and adjustments to the texture. And if we invert this displacement, we can quickly inset the extruded detail. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we can utilize the paint tool in two different ways. So now let's take a look at the other, which is painting masks. Let's say we want to add a bit of rust to this metal floor panel. Well, first we'll go ahead and activate this Megascan surface layer here, and then down at the bottom of the layer stack, we'll locate the mask painting icon. Now we have two ways we can apply this mask. If I simply click on the icon, the layer stays visible and I can begin painting out the parts I don't want. Alternatively, I can press and hold Alt as I click on the icon, and this will give me a black mask to start with. Now I can begin painting in the areas of the surface that I want to show. The brush panel on the left is identical to the brush panel we just went over, except for the color settings. Because this is dealing with masks, we only need a single grayscale value to work with, which we can adjust by using this slider or by clicking the color swatch. While painting, we can hit X on the keyboard to give us the inverted value of what we're painting with, so that we can quickly bounce between adding and removing the mask. When painting on 2D tiling surfaces, if we hold down the shift button, then click and drag the mouse, the stroke will lock to the axis we drag in, making a perfectly straight line based on the canvas. And if we hold down shift, click once, then move to another location on the canvas, and then click again, 
we'll get a straight line between those two clicks. We can also use the camera alignment to paint a straight line. To do this, position your camera where you want to make the straight line, then click and hold the mouse button before pressing Shift and S. Now as you drag the mouse, your stroke will be perfectly aligned with your camera angle. One of the things I love most about Mixer is the harmonious blending of masking workflows. With Mixer, I don't have to choose whether I want my layer to use procedural masking or a mask I paint by hand. Instead, the two can work harmoniously together to give me complete creative control over my mask. This approach maximizes my efficiency by getting most of the way there with mask components, and then I can add the finishing touches by hand. So here we have a wooden chest, and I've procedurally added some upward-facing dirt through the mask stack. If we wanted to now polish this mask by hand, we can just add a paintable mask to the layer and begin painting away the procedural detail we created with the mask stack. It's worth noting that this paintable layer trumps the mask stack in terms of hierarchy, so we can not only take away the procedural masking, but we can also add to it by selecting a white value and painting, which will fully reveal the surface layer. And if you find yourself getting a bit carried away and want to revert back to some of the original mask stack, you can select the eraser tool by hitting E, and then erase the elements you don't like, and now you're back to the original mask. The painting feature inside Mixer offers you the freedom and flexibility as an artist to really bring your textures to life. And being able to use it for both painting textures as well as for masking layers makes it one of the most powerful tools in your arsenal. So be sure to utilize it with your next mix. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.